Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Do you know what? There's really nothing new in fishing. And yet, I read about LRF. Light rock fishing. Okay? I'm not really big into catching blennies, dragonets and tiny little things, sea scorpions. I suppose it's good fun in the rock pool, something like that. But I think LRF could be used to catch bigger fish as well. You know, it's not just little teensy things that uh, might make a conga bait if you're lucky. What about HRF? I thought, oh, that must be heavy rock fishing. No, it's hard rock fishing. I don't think I've ever walked over any soft rocks. I may be wrong. I may be wrong and have to stand corrected. So do you know what I've invented? As things do go full circle in fishing, SRF is the latest craze. What is it? I've just invented it. It's called serious rock fishing. That's catching big fish. And to join the Serious Rock Fishing Club, you need to catch a fish over, let's say, four pounds. That's very, very bearable. And of course, that's quite a decent sized fish. To do this, you need some good tackle, and we're gonna take you somewhere where there's some good fish. First, this is our guide to SRF fishing tackle. Right, SRF fishing, the latest craze to sweep my pool table, we're saying. Might sweep the world later on, but it's sweeping my pool table at the moment. SRF fishing. Fishing off of rocks, hard rocks, bigger fish. Okay, it may not have escaped your attention, some of you out there, that I'm not actually a tackle tar. I'm only interested in, in fishing. But, glasses on, spectacles on, I will run through very briefly my rods. Now, I don't sell these rods, as a lot of you know. We don't do a lot of tackle talk, we are more interested in the fishing, the tackle, the tips, the techniques. These are all Coniflex, British made. I personally, I like Coniflex rods. Okay, here we go. A two piece, asymmetric it's called. You can always check the Coniflex, you know, what their latest ones are. This is an old one, goes together like that. This one is called their Super Bass. It has an optimum casting weight of three ounces. Three ounces is really about as light as I want to go if I'm doing SRF fishing. Don't really want to go light. The idea is serious rock fishing, big tackle, big baits, big fish. So that throws three ounces. Another one is called the Flounder Basher. Throws about four ounces, asymmetric again. And some of these I built myself, some are built for me. A little sliding Fuji fit in there. And just as a basic tip, this is what I found. I don't know whether it's a standard rule, for casting, under the armpit with the butt of the rod, the reel should come there, and just a little bit, inch or so, so when you cast like that, it doesn't, doesn't catch into your body. So measure that if you're making your own rods, from the reel, if you've got a multiplier, or the other way, if you've got a fixed ball, just under the armpit, about an inch or two short. Super bass, flounder basher, and whoa, this one. This is a 2400 and a 2600. I've got two here. They throw sort of sixes, five and six ounces, Big one will throw seven ounces, asymmetric. This one got um, a regular butt with it, but I have also got a dual butt, which is like all metal if you like, dual aluminum, and that's for casting, pendulum casting, which I don't bother doing, I'm using fixed balls. This casts my big conga baits, that's why I like it. 2400 a little bit less, put different rings on it, a bit bigger rings, again sliding reach fit in. That one, asymmetric again, but all 12 foot these are, I guess that one would throw four ounces hard, five ounces with a lob. More than enough for fishing off the rocks. Finally, it's a weird one. Asymmetric with a difference. Put it together, it's an Integra. It's a Coniflex Integra rod, okay? So, really good for casting. It's for boat fishing, but watch this, watch this tip. Twist, pull. Ooh, twist, lock. Reel on, cast out, close. You can fish off a boat with it nice and small wound up. However, I found this has been a very, very good rod for conga fishing close in. It's plenty of beef, plenty of power, and it throws optimum casting weight six to eight ounces. It's a chunker, good tip action. I'm not messing around, we're moving straight on to the reels. Okay, here we go people, straight in. I can cast with multipliers, I'm not gonna cast with multipliers off of rock marks because I feel unstable when I'm casting, or, you know, for, for winding up with a big cast of the pendulum reel, really you want to be really well balanced. Sometimes it's difficult, it's tough on some of these big rock marks, one leg's up, one leg's down, you're leaning this way, that way. 
you know, you concentrate too much on the cast. We've all done it. Wacko! Oh, attack with a knife. Okay, here we go. Light rock fishing is for very, very light lines. I don't know, six pounds, I would say. That's me. I wouldn't want to go much less than that if I was out doing an LRF. SRF, bit heavier. 15, 20 pound line. These are just cheap reels. Stern drag there. Firestar, 50, this one storms. Well, just general reel, not expensive. Takes quite a lot of line. SRF, ideal if you're Pollock spinning. Ideal for Pollock spinning. These would take double figure Pollock off the shore. Then I just use three real jumbo fix balls. These, this one I've had probably, oh man, 25 years. GT 9000, uh, it's a Shimano Biomaster. Ages and ages, nice big chunky handle, never let me down. Minimal service, in my case that means none. Uh, so minimal service for me, do look after all reels, wash them down in fresh water after using salt. And cheaper version is a Storm Firestar, and this one is a 65 larger one. Takes a lot of line, you know, it's middle of the range, cheap to middle of the range reel, get it from most of your tackle shops. That would do the job if you're just starting. Distance is not the key here. The score at 80, which is the Akios reel, nice big ball grip. A whole different animal, isn't it? A whole different animal, look. Beautiful, smooth. Again, it's not going to catch me any more fish than this one, the cheaper version. Not going to catch me any more fish, but still nice to use, still nice to use. Both take a lot of line. I put braid on there, which might not be a wise decision using it off the rocks. We're going to give it a crack. Generally, I've got some of that black pitch black mono. 15 pound minimum when you're doing SRF fishing. There we go, that's all we need on the rods and reels. I'll show you a bit of terminal gear. I want to go fishing, playing with all this stuff. I want to go. Right guys, specs on. I've got these from Tony's Tackle at Eastbourne. Tony C Match 5 pulley rigs. These are large ones with a 4.0 Aberdeen hook. Oh, they're good, I love them. On these little spool winders, all hooked up. Make all your rigs up before you go. I never used to years ago. But I'll tell you what, it does save you time. It does save you time. This one is quite simple to use, really. Just untangle it a bit. It's off. The lead goes on the bottom here, which has a little bait holder as well. It slides through there. You can see you've got a, a, a barrel swivel runs up, a bead, another swivel, and then you trace. You bait up. I'll show you briefly this one. I've got to get fishing. Well, we haven't actually got to catch a ferry. You put your hook into the clip like that. You tie your line from the main line onto this barrel saw here. There you are, imagine it. Lead, hook, main line. Whizz, flies to the sea, hits the seabed, bang. Oh look, that's magic. It falls off. All your baits out there intact. It's laying down. Along comes Mr. Bull Hustle Conga, picks it up. Generally you'd be winding in. What are you doing? You're winding the lead into the snags, the lead is bumping along the bottom. Not with a pulley rig, it slides. As the fish pulls here, and you're pulling the other way, the lead's down this end, it slides all the way through like this. Fish is down here on this side fighting. Bang, comes up tight here, there's the lead. It lifts the lead up off the seabed and allows you to fight the fish clean. It saves you money on leads and it catches you the fish. The pulley rig, I love it. You can put a pen, panel one on there with two hooks. Mm, two hooks in a rocky situation. SRF, one way ticket to losing gear. Good for the tackle dealers, bad for us. I think a single hook's enough. So pulley rigs are the way to go. Okay, what other goodies do you need for SRF? You need some good hooks. You need, well, you can use it. I use the cheapest ones I found are I import from America. Uh, Eagle Claw, a Shaughness is Eagle Claw, good, cheap American make, basic. Uh, you can get other makes as well, different makes there, and get a range of hooks. Anything, say, 1-0, 6 8 different makes. So you've got a really strong ones. These, uh, that's a 7 -0, so it's like a split size there. So you've got a, vi a variety of hooks. You're going to need some, obviously, some good, strong leader. Uh, what have we got here? We've got, that's 80 pounds, which you can buy as a shock leader for casting. It's quite... It's quite nice and supple that one. I don't dislike it 80 pounds. I've also uh, got to an orange line, uh, which is 70 pound baking strain, quite like that. So that's gonna make my conga and bull husk traces. I don't like using wire for traces. 
But if you use a minimum, minimum of say 70, 80 pounds of mono for making up your leaders, take yourself some spare little snap links to make up your rigs over there. Try and pre-make rigs if you can, those pulley rigs. And you've got pulley beads and stuff there. One of the goodies I pick up, uh, big hooks. Oh, I'll tell you what, do take. I do take some of these because as well as SRF fishing, you can still get big pollock uh, fishing from the shore with big jigs. But you've got to think depth is no good. Uh, Mike's just in invested in a little LRF outfit. I don't know how far it casts, not very far at all. It's going to bust on a big pollock. It's absolutely the tip's going to snap. You can get an, a heavier um, equivalent rod with one of those fine quiver tips, that's okay. But a light spinner rod will do. I mean, there's nothing new in fishing, it's all been done before, you know, light rods, light spinning. But what you need to think is depth, depth, depth. You're not going to be fishing 10 foot off a beach. Some of the rock marks could be 30, 40, 50 feet deep. A big, big old jig head is what you want. Heavy ones like these, you can get ball ones or fish shaped head ones. A jig head onto which you thread the proverbial plastic or rubber worms. Now, I personally, obviously because I've got two packages on them, like those, I call them fire towels, I don't know what they call them here. Flutter worms, they're called flutter worms. Ah, doesn't that sound pretty? Flutter worms. Right, I call them fire towels, because the American ones have a much brighter red on them. This is what you want, a rubber worm. Thread them up the hook on the jig, jig head, thread it on like bait, to keep it nice and straight, Tie it on, cast it out. Wow, that's complicated, but let it sink deep, work it back in slow jigs. Or get yourself some of these, well, these are called krill, but we used to call them a German sprat years ago. That's what they were called, a German sprat, big casting ones. Yeah, they're not the world's greatest lure, but they're worth, well, one guy said to me, are they worth using or are they worth losing? Well, let's face it, sea fishing, it all goes one way at the end of the day, doesn't it, Davy Jones locker? These ones I do like. These are like a Dexter wedge. I don't know what they call super wedges. These are called super wedges. Um, get some of those. I've used them before. You can see there's a couple lost out of the pack already. Just the right size. Says 28 to 38 grams. I don't know what that weighs. I don't know in English. Somebody speak English to me. I don't know about these grams. Anyway, that's what it says. Cheapo barrel swivels. I'm not, not with SRF. Big fish, big baits, big tackle. I'm not using like luxury swivels. Get some nice, these are just bronze barrel 2 O's, 25 in a pack. Cheapest chips, cheapest chips. You can afford to lose them. And to be honest, they're so strong, you, you're not gonna lose any fish over them. So you just, they just get bags off them, they cost you like pence. Get some elasticated thread. Now that's not because you're distance casting with stuff like worm baits and that. You're using chunko boats, whole sandal, whole launch, half a mackerel, a whole squid, but they still need binding on if you're going to give them a good crack out on those fixed balls because I still want a bit of depth out, a uh, distance out there to allow for the depth swing it swinging back in. So elasticated thread, cheapest chips again, just bait elastic, that's what it is really. I've got some, I'm just going to take these anyway, but these are a plastic relay clip, right, that you clip your bait on as per the pulley rig I showed you earlier, but these ones have got like a bigger tag on them and I kind of like that because if I'm fishing a whole squid bait or a half a mackerel and heaving it out, I don't want it to keep flying off all the time. And I find that those plastic ones got a little bit longer tag end on to put the bend of the hook into. There we go, guys. I've got a pack of SSGs in case I want to fish in close. That's it. Small barrels for all the bits and pieces, a few beads, extra snap links. I mean, basically it is this. It is a running ledger, a weight, dispensable or otherwise, a short trace, a big 8 hook, so 70 pound, 8 hook, big bait, poang, out we go, hopefully a big fish. You can also, just as a tip, make up your own traces beforehand. These are my beach ones for small flatfish and stuff. Just use a piece of insulation that goes around pipes. See the split in it? You can tuck the swivel in there, wind it all the way around, and just put the tag end of the hook in there. Actually, I think we've got a film on making these as tips. Cost you nothing, virtually nothing, two pounds. Uh, take a spare spool, I've got 15 pound minimum here. If you do get a, well you are definitely SRF is gonna bust off sooner or later. If you, if you do lose a lot of gear, and this can be used for pollock trace as well, 15 pound, they will eat it. Don't go too light, please don't go too light. Big fish swim close into deep water rocks. 15 pound, that's just handy premium, I've had it years. It lasts, provided you keep your line in a, a black room, dark room, uh, you don't get the ultraviolet damaging it, it will last okay. 
So there we go guys, a couple of other tips. If, you, if, you get, if you're climbing over rocks, I try to cut up some old inner tubes and I tie that around my bunch of rods. I tie it in a knot and it cinches up tight. That's an old school tip, tip there. What does it cost you? Nothing. Just go around to the tire stock and ask them, can I have a, a spare inner tube? And I've got this. Those freshwater anglers know what it is. It's a point gag. Uh, 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 I've taken a hook out. Do you know what somebody sent me this for? Take that, Graham. When you buy a round of drinks, you'll be able to open your wallet. Well, that's not very nice, is it? That's not very nice. So you won't be buying him a drink. I'm going to take it SRF fishing with my son Mike. We go with a guy called Paul Harris. Paul Harris I've known for many years. He lives in Ireland. There's not much he doesn't know about rock fishing. Hopefully we get to catch some fish. This is an expedition to adventure. Serious rock fishing. Let's put this in a bucket and go. The journey was to the ends of the earth. Well, almost over the River Severn Bridge and on through the Welsh countryside to Fishguard, where we were hoping to catch the Stella ferry line over to Rosslare in Ireland. Once out in the Irish Sea, we realised the wind was actually, well, pretty fresh. But would it scupper our plans to make the first SRF film? I fished with Mike in a Florida hurricane. This one was a mere breeze. After three and a half hours, the Irish coastline came into sight. We were on our final long drive to a rock fisherman's paradise, the soon to be famous Bearer Peninsula, with a totally awesome fishing show. Right people, before you go out on those rocks, they're slippery, slimy, they're dangerous. It's not the place for the faint hearted. You need a few tips. If you do go on your own and you're an adult, I strongly recommend a lightweight life jacket. Just in case you fall in the water, a little thing like this wraps around your neck, easy to carry, won't inhibit your movements, could save your life. Another important safety thing to take, especially when it's getting dark, small, lightweight head torches with adjustable, adjustable straps, a number of different settings on them, really important, especially if you fall over on the rocks in the dark, the Coast Guard's out looking for you, these are vital. Also, how about a pair of compact binoculars? You can stand up on the cliffs on the rocks, you can look down there, try and, you know, spot some good rock fishing platforms, but remember, they magnify everything, so gaps that you have to jump across might be a bit bigger than you think. However, they are also safety items I feel worth taking. Another important safety item, especially if the Coast Guard's looking for you. Very small, very lightweight and very cheap. A whistle. Really, really simple. It goes straight in the bag, doesn't take up any space. Again, really important if the Coast Guard or a friend is out looking for you. Very important. That's a good idea, but also a good idea on a nice pair of boots. Do not use rubber boots, wellingtons or anything on the rocks when it rains. Some of those black rocks get very slimy and slippery. I got caught once in the silly off for three hours when it rained after I was fishing. Nice pair of leather walking boots or rambler's boots, coat treads on the bottom, give you grip. Think safety. Good pair of boots. Another important safety factor, especially if you're out all day, is keeping hydrated. You can get one of these small camelback things. They can take up to about two litres of water, I think this one. Small, easy, goes in your bag like that, the tube comes out. You don't have to worry about carrying anything, carrying bottles in your hands, your hands free. Really, really important to stay hydrated, especially in that heat and sunny weather. No big metal flasks for me, it seems. What about these? Woo! Like look at those, don't we? A nice pair of rubber gardening gloves. Bright orange, easy to find, but this is important, people. Very, very rough and grippy there. 
Don't get your hands cut on barnacles if you're climbing over the rocks, especially at low tide. About two pounds. Gotta be a buy, gotta be a buy. Chuck them in the bag. And also good for picking up peeler crabs as well. Very practical one there. Again, another thing not everyone takes, very cheap, small first aid kit. Cuts, grazes, fishing line, fishing hooks, you're bound to get them. This saves you the problem of getting messy, easy to use, cheap, small, again, very important. Finally, probably the most important thing, a mobile phone. You need to let people know where you're going, take the mobile phone with you. You may not get signal everywhere, but generally with emergency calls, you could, they boost your signal for you. This is vital, guys. They can get GPS points and everything from this, they can find you. You can even put it in receivable, small plastic bags, whoops. You can even break them as well, or you can get little Ziploc ones as well. Really, really important. This is a godsend, it's a must, guys. Remember, no fish is worth your life when you're out there rock fishing. If you're kids, youngsters, please go with an adult, go with your parents. If you're an adult, go in twos at least. You need to think safety, enjoy your fishing, enjoy your rock fishing. We certainly do. Come back and tell us all about it here at the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We finally arrived after an arduous trek across the Irish roads. We are out on the Bear Peninsula, a famous, a fairly unknown mark. It is one that you could come over and do some serious rock fishing on. And the man to tell us about this serious rock fishing is none other than Paul Harris, who I've known for a great number of years. He's sitting right here and he's going to give us a little bit of a rundown on the sort of fishing you can expect, what you can catch, all the tips that you guys need to know. Well, here we are, as Graham was saying, on, on the Bearer. The Bearer is probably the least known of all the peninsulas of Ireland, of southwestern Ireland. Um, behind me there, to the north, you've got the, the Dingle Peninsula. Next one down would be the Ring of Kerry. And then here we are on the Bearer. Uh, probably the least fished, the least known, um, the least explored. I've been living out here now for nine years and uh, having a great time going around and finding new fishing. Would you believe I'm about the only person on the whole of the bearer who does any serious fishing? So I have it all to myself, which is good in one way because it means that I've got my own private fishery, but tough in another way on finding uh, where all the best fishing is. We're talking about rock fishing here. All of the bearer is, is really rock fishing. We've got a few beaches, um, but the best of the fishing comes off the rocks. And doesn't mean you're fishing onto rough ground, quite often you're fishing off the rocks onto sand. So the species that we're catching really vary with the areas that we're, uh, we're exploring. As a, as a fisherman myself who spent uh, so many happy fishing holidays both in Ireland and other parts of the world, I know what you want when you come on a holiday and the most important thing really first of all is local knowledge. Um, so when we started our B&B Drummogalorn House uh, in Adrigal, the first thing we wanted to do was make sure we had the knowledge to pass on to, uh, to visiting anglers. So that means I have to go out and really search and, well I tell my wife I'm doing research, she doesn't always believe me that I'm enjoying myself sort of thing. But it means we go out and find the fishing. So when you arrive your fishing holiday would start on day one. Not on day six which is what you're normally doing when you just find the best place to fish and then you've got to go home. So we take you around, show you the fishing on day one and also at the house we have a full stock of all the baits, most important, you can't fish without bait. So we always have in sand eel, crab rag, lug, worm, squid, all the usual sort of things that you need on a fishing holiday. Of course when you're on holiday the important thing you want to do is plenty of fishing. So living on a peninsula or holidaying on a peninsula it gives you a great advantage because whatever the weather does it means we can always get out fishing. North, south, east, west winds don't bother us. We've always got marks that can produce fish. Species you can expect to catch? Well we have three species of ray here basically. The most common one being thornbacks. We also have spotted and small-eyed. Uh, we have, of course, the rock species you'd expect to catch, wrasse and pollock. Great wrasse and pollock fishing. Uh, pollock last year, our best pollock was £14. Now, I'm not going to say you're going to catch a £14-pounder every time, but you certainly can expect uh, fish up around the six, eight pound mark would be, in a week's fishing, you'd certainly expect to get them. In a good session, 30, 40 fish. Not exceptional, not unusual. Uh, Bullhuss, that's a great sort of rock fish. Um, plenty of those to be found. Uh, our best one last year was just short of £17, which is a fairly exceptional uh, fish from the shore. This year, we're talking now, we're just at the end of May, we've already had them to nearly £16, so it shows the quality. Plenty of conger, we've had conger from the shore, £30, £40. But once again, mid-team fish, plenty of those great sport you can expect from them. 
Although most of our fishing, I say, is off the uh, off rocks, we've also got a couple of beaches, and uh, and there you can expect to find that great southwestern fish, the bass. Um, not big fish. We've had some big fish. We've, we've our best bass now was uh, around about twelve pound. Would you believe that was rock fishing? And it took a whole squid that was really meant for a conger or a or a bull hus. Um, but on lures, once again, the normal sort of fish you'd expect three, four pounds. Nice, uh, nice quality, good fun fishing. For the first, oh, I suppose first five or six years here, we really concentrated on the big fish, the the bull hus the various species of rays, the congas, that's, we were having great fun catching them and that's what we wanted to catch. Then we started looking a little bit uh, at the smaller species, the flatfish. Um, now we never caught any, then we really realised we never caught any because we never fished for them. Our first session after flatfish, um, the guy I was with, he had a double hitter place on his first cast using crab. So we started experimenting using different baits, fishing some of the, the sandier marks and sure enough we found place, we found flounder, uh, we found specimen dabs, if you want to come to Ireland for big dabs, we found specimen dabs around about a pound and a half. So it's really a matter of experimenting. There is still so much exploring to do on the bearer. We haven't found it all, so come and show us what you can catch. One of the important things that uh, the people ask him when we start talking about catching huss and conger and rays is, well, does that mean we have to go out night fishing all the time? And uh, while some of the guys that come really enjoy their night fishing, it's not vital, it's not necessary. A day like today, with it lovely, sunny and bright, we've today caught huss to nearly £10, we've had conger to £20, mainly because of the depths we're fishing into. In some of the places you'll be fishing into 40, 50 foot of water. Down there, it's already dusk, it's already night time. So it doesn't matter about the day, how hot or how bright it is, you can still pick up those sort of species then. So night fishing is not a necessity, come and catch big fish through the day. Where we live, we, we're about sort of uh, 12 miles into the peninsula, a place called Adrigal. If you look on a map of uh, the Bearer Peninsula, uh, look along, you'll see a place called Castletown Bear. That's the sort of capital of the uh, of the peninsula. It's also one of the biggest whitefish ports in Ireland for commercial fishing. I think it's the, the second biggest actually, so you'll see some mighty commercial trawlers there. Um, it's strange really, I suppose they're doing all that fishing, that's why there's not so many people out doing rod and line fishing. But as you work your way around the peninsula then, you'll also see, see little villages, Alahees, Erhan, Iries, these lovely little places tucked away. And all of these places offer depths of water that you really just can't believe. Dursey Island, the only place in Ireland where you have to get on a cable car to get to it. Off Dursey Island, 60 foot of water within an, an easy casting range. And there is the home of big pollock, big wrasse, big conger, and close in. For any of you that, uh, that, that may be really just starting out in sea fishing or not that experienced and don't want to spend a load of money on all expensive equipment and everything, don't worry. If you come over to us, any of our guests have free use of rods and reels and tripods, both for spinning, for ground fishing, and even the new super LRF style of fishing where you're fishing the soft plastics uh, for the smaller fish. Uh, we have a full range of tackle there, it's all free for guests. Well, we've got quite a few marks that, that, uh, that tick the boxes for Big Huss and for Big Conger. Probably the one that I'd favour at the moment though is one that's been throwing up Big Huss, Big Huss and Big Conger. Um, and that's out at Codhead. It's, uh, it's a very new mark. Well, like I say, I've been here eight, nine years. I found this one last year. Uh, just started fishing it. It's already thrown up Huss to nearly £16. It's thrown up Conger to £30. It's only been fished about half a dozen times, so its potential is, uh, is really unknown. Casting out into about 35, 40 foot of water, as well as the huss, as well as the conger. Do you know, I've got a very sneaky feeling one of these days we're going to pick a ling up there as well. So that's the one for me, out near Codhead. Well, at the moment, uh, you know, say we've got a big westerly blowing in, which would really take this mark out uh, on Codhead. Uh, a very short drive away, it's a lovely little spot called Blue Islands. It's a strange place because you're fishing off rocks, you're fishing onto pure sand. There's, there's no, not even any reef out there at all, but it throws up some cracking uh, huss. We've had huss to double figures there and, and some nice conger. Strange enough, it also throws up plaice, flounder, dabs, cod, whiting. It throws up a little bit of everything that place at different times of the year. Uh, but that's going to be our easy backup mark because we're lovely and sheltered there from, uh, from any strong westerly winds.
a start, if you're out on a peninsula that juts straight into the Atlantic Ocean, do expect some wind. But on this trip, we also had that rarest of visitors. Yes, blue sky and sunshine. Never having fished this part of the Irish coastline, we were totally in the hands of Paul. And as well as putting us on the best fishing spots, many of the great views and tourist areas were pointed out. Everywhere you look, there are some great looking SRF spots. Let's face it, the entire peninsula is a serious piece of rock. It's, well, solid granite. The roads were empty. You could stop anywhere to check it out. Man, what a great stress buster. Okay, we've uh, we've learned some of the fabulous rock fishing marks that's down here on the Bear Peninsula from Paul. Had a little chit chat with him. There's obviously more marks than you can shake a stick at here. But as with Irish weather, you have to take account of the weather. And here is tipping down. We've done about 10 miles. We know exactly where we're going to fish, but we're just waiting to let this weather go through because it's pretty bad weather at the moment. But I'll give you a tip while you're here as well. When you're travelling around, if you're in twos or threes or even on the rocks, little intercoms, little what we used to call years ago, walkie talkies. That's because you could walk and talk at the same time. And that's rare at my age to be able to do those two together. So you get yourself a little system like this, very cheap, you can buy these, you know, 30, 40 pounds, I think they are now. And then if you're split up on the rocks, you can say, we're going to pack up now, or we're going to move, or I'm getting fished, you want to come over, that sort of things. They are so helpful, it's unbelievable, like this. So what's the name of the mark we're actually going to be fishing, Paul, uh, down here? Socks on the rocks. I won't go into that anymore, yeah, I won't go into that anymore. Um, you think this weather's going to blow through okay? And just while we're waiting for this to clear, um, just let the viewers know what sort of depths will we going to have, you know, in front of us out there? It goes up very quick off the rocks. It's about sort of 15, 20 foot uh, in front of us, and it stays that depth right the way out to the islands. Oh, brilliant. OK, well, five minutes, and we'll do this last leg just to get down to the rocks, and uh, fingers crossed we get some baits in the water. We'll be doing it. And there you see, I can talk to Paul half a mile away, well, actually, he's just parked in front of us, but it still works. You can see the system works. So, rock fishermen, why not invest in some of these? Cheap, and I'll tell you what, another safety factor. Oh, come on, rain, come on. Once that rain had blown through, we were out on the move again. Round lanes, up hills, down valleys. And on each turn, I just had this craving to jump out and start fishing. But distances down to the water here are deceptive. Good fishing spots might be a lot further off than you actually realised, which is where a good shore guide comes in. As Paul knew this mark was sheltered from the wind even before he left his house 10 miles earlier. Local knowledge can save you a lot of wasted fishing time. And just look at the size of the mountain backdrop. Hey, do watch those hairpin bends, guys. Anything could come the other way. A car, a tractor, a, a donkey. Under normal conditions, it's best to travel as light as you can for SRF, but with a totally awesome film crew, we just have to take 
tripods, cameras, big bait boxes. So while Paul and Mike set off straight away, when I finished filming I looked round to see, yes, all the camera equipment. When we weighed it up later, I found I'd been carrying over 60 pounds of equipment. Bring back national service, I say. A good yomp to the next RV never hurts anyone. And when you get nearer to the sea, watch out for any wet rocks. When wet, can be slippery and lethal. So take short steps. Speed is not of the essence when climbing over coastal rocks. And just look how sheltered this spot is once you climb down out of the wind. Phew, it's making me tired just watching them on this screen. Very often, the roads run right down to the coastline and you can find a parking space just leaving it a reasonable walk to the mark. But don't just leave your car to block the road. Use your brain a bit. You've got to keep it clear. I'll tell you, if they come round with a the tractor, they'll push it out the way. Big ball house from the shore, definitely a PB for me. That's serious rock fishing. What are you there, guys? Absolutely solid muscle. As Paul says, dogfish with attitude. There we go, guys. Let's get him back in the water. We'll get still first, but that is SRF, serious rock fishing, and it is totally awesome, guys. Get yourself down there. There we go. Let's get a picture and get it back. It's named Socks on the Rocks as most people go in there, get a booty of salt water. And then they dry their socks out on the rocks. Mike was the first to join this exclusive club, but both Paul and the cameraman escaped. A uh, typical little Rock caught Pollock, a little bit scratched from where he was on the rocks. Probably about what? Three pound? Yeah, nice fish. Nice little stamp. I mean that was that was that took a bait off the bottom. And you often get them taking baits off the bottom as well as catching them on the soft plastics and the lures and everything. In fact some of the biggest can come off the bottom. <laughs> good fish, good fish. Right, we've got the bullhouse here. Yep. Go down guys, we just get one still off the two fish together. That is the rock fishing you can get over here on the Bear Peninsula, two at a time. Always check your tides to make sure you don't get cut off. This is a falling tide, as you can see by the exposed wet weed on the rocks. And don't go in a big swell, exercise caution and common sense. You can see how Paul made the right choice. 
It was rough out to sea, but calm water was right in front of us. Use a good tripod to keep clear of the rocks. Always check your drag can release line. Or it's bye bye rod when a conga or bull husk comes along. Try and keep your line away from the kelp that grows on the rock face. Many a good fish has been lost here at the last stage of the battle. And watch your footing. This is SRF, serious rock fishing. You could be fishing on the edge. Well, even the ledge. One slip too many and you'll be in with the fish. Think safety, even if you have hooked a good fish. I personally hate to fall in the sea for the sake of a dogfish. And you don't have to kill everything with SRF, just unhook them and throw them back for another day. The saying among world travellers is, take only pictures, leave only footprints. Hmm, that's a bit hard on granite rocks, but you know what I mean. SRF means big baits, big tackle and big fish. So be prepared to sit it out with a chunk of mackerel, squid or sandal if you are after those lunkers. And take plenty of food and water. If the fishing turns out to be good, you'll probably want to stay on longer. Of course, Paul was soon off the mark showing us how his SRF should be done with a very nice pollock. Well, that's another pollock, and actually this time on a piece of mackerel, which was really meant for a huss, but we'll take what's going. Four pounds, Paul? Yeah, about four pounds. Two, three, three and a half, four pounds. So that'd be about the average, really, round here? Pretty much the average yeah. stamp. I mean, we get them up to around double figures. We've had them to 14 pounds off the shore. 14 pounds? And, and really, you know, eights and nines aren't uncommon at all. So uh, yeah. so that's a bit of a baby, really, by those standards. Nice fish, nice fish. So we grab a still of that one. For Mike, the weight with a big bait on was worth it and he was soon battling a good fish that would enable him to join the exclusive SRF club. That means catching a fish over four pounds from some serious rocks. make sure you take a net with an extendable handle. It could be further down to the sea than you think. There we go, small hus this time. The tide's just on the flood as well. So, probably the reason why we're getting some, some bites. This was on the panel rig. He's trying to get me. Nice little husk, nice markings on it. And hopefully, now the flood tide's coming in, we get more fish. But we're going to get this one back, get the rod baited up again, and get them straight back out.
Hass? Yeah, it's never Hass, yeah. <laughs> hey. Another one bites the dust. Yeah, just thinking of packing up and right at the end there's nice nice little huss on sand eel. Great bait sand eel. Seems to catch fish all the way through. That <laughs> is a big cake hole there. Did you get many of these, Paul? Ah, oh, good day you. I mean that's that's only a small one really. We've had them to uh, We've had them to 15, my best one's 17 pound. Wow. Last year the uh, best one we had was just short of 16 pound. And really, they're great fun. And, and a dozen of these in the day is nothing unusual. Great sport. And you get them in the deeper water here, you get them during the day as well. So it's not a matter of going out night fishing for them or anything. Don't like need that. to stay out all night then? No, 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 no. Deep water, it's it's dusk down there sort of thing, so uh, so you can just keep fishing through the day as as we're doing now. Consider yourself a fisherman. Just how far do you want to take it? Subscribe to this channel for more awesome videos. Paul and Anne Harris run their four-star Irish country house in the shadow of the magnificent Sugarloaf Mountains. The mild maritime climate sees a variety of unusual plants and flowers. It has its own organic farm, garden and orchard that supplies fresh food to all the guests with home cooking a featured speciality. You can enjoy a full choice of breakfast menu and dinner is available by prior arrangement. Wi-Fi is available free of charge to guests and all rooms have ensuite colour television with satellite channels and a DVD player. Rooms can have double or single beds and a room on the ground floor has a super king bed. This can convert to two single beds by prior notice. Join Paul and Anne Harris in the heart of Ireland's Bearer Peninsula. We've done the tackle talk with Paul. He's taken us now into the deepest points of the Bearer Peninsula and just look over there at that fabulous scenery. That is unbelievable. It looked more like British Columbia than Ireland. And when would I see the tourist bear? or a moose, or an eagle. What a setting. It actually looks like we're going to the back of beyond here with ancient stone monuments. My goodness, how historic is this place? Puxley Castle, this is called. Beautiful spot. Being on the southwest peninsula here, you got all these palm trees growing and they get a lot of sort of exotic and semi-exotic plants growing because it gets mild airflow. They get a maritime climate you know, due to the influence of the Atlantic Ocean there. And the sun is out. It was horrific last night, wind and rain. The wind today is howling. 
but Paul is trying to get us down to this spot. It's an epic safari, but I'll tell you what, it's worth it. And look up in front of Paul up there, it looks like something out of Lord of the Rings. Well, Paul's gone on ahead. I'll tell you what, it is so impressive. <laughs> We've lost him, we're totally lost now. Well, we're not really because we've got walkie-talkies with us as well. We can keep in touch. But the scenery, gobsmacking. This was another sheltered SRF spot. Casting from the mainland out into the deep water channel towards Bear Island. There are some good fish travelling along this stretch of coastline. As shore guide Paul illustrated with this nice pollock. Well, first pollock of the pollock trip, a few casts on the decks, the wedge type lure, one of the storm ones, not a big, and Paul's in as well. There's one fish coming up, pollock, and Paul's on over there as well. There's, I think Paul's got a bigger fish here. First pollock of the trip, and pulls on, I think, a bigger fish. What a place! Oh, nice! Yeah, nice fish. Well, we've come way down the coast to try for one of the legendary serious rockfish in Conga. I've got a whole squid down right down this wall. It's that big wall. I've got two baits down and one out, all on squid. So I've brought over to Island with me. Of course, you can get it all in Island. I didn't realise that. I've got all the bait over here and I've got a bite here now. I'm going to set up on it. I think he's backed me into a snag. Obviously, we're about to go and get the camera. Fingers crossed, we might get to show you something. The main thing you want to do, if you set up on a conga, bam is to try and keep him coming out of the snag because he will take you straight back in and bust you off. And this one might have already done that. Get yourself a good position because when you strike you don't want to be toppling off the rocks. Fish on! Yeah! His head up. That's not a conga. Ooh, what is it? bull hus. It's a hus. You're right, it's a hus, bull hus, bull hus, bull hus. There you go. Serious rock fishing, big baits, big tackle, and a big drop for me to go down. Mummy, come on, my mummy. Always try to keep your big fish up on the surface, or they bury themselves into the kelp. So what we're going to try and do is get right down there. I'm going to try and swing him up on the tray. So I've got 80 pounds on there. Big, big black bull hut this one. Hopefully, he's just going to stay there. It's a bit windy. Man, he's black as the ace of spades, this one. That's a sign he's hunting and feeding around the inside of all these snags, snags of rock. There's a nice rock pool here, guys. I'm going to try and get him in there. Jill, get her. Now, all you shore fishermen, this is SRF. Serious rock fishing, seriously big. 
fish. That's what it's all about. Maybe, I've done this before, obviously, I might not go beach fishing again. He is black, 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 that fish. Absolutely, I'll tell you what, that's a big bull husk there. He's got no belly to it. Let me just get that hook out if I can. Let's put him in the lock, rock pool to calm down a minute, if you will. It's probably splash water everywhere. Not a conga that I was after, but I'll tell you what, you're going to be disappointed with a fish like this. Look at that one. Bait up, get it out there, get those rods in the water. SRF is about catching good fish, having great sport in a fantastic setting, but letting the big ones go. By all means keep the odd pollock for eating, but if you kill everything, there'll be nothing left for tomorrow. And it's great just to see them swim away. Paul's next mark was my favourite, 30 feet high with a view over to the Kerry Head Peninsula. And for a change, the wind had actually died down. This was a magnificent SRF mark and screamed out good fishing. I learned to climb like a mountain goat. Don't show the wife where I climbed out, please. She won't let me out to play anymore. And we've had something nagging us down here. Uh, first we've got a small strap conga down here. But oh, he's, oh, he's back the bait out. He's chewed it. He's chewed the bait. He's had a nibble on that, yeah. He wasn't the hook's hooked. turned in the bait. Just That's to show right. people, yeah. that hook was starting to turn in the bait. Maybe a little bit early on the strike. Tell you what, we'll get that puppy back down again. I drop them straight down. Just back there, hook around like that. Always leave your hook clear so it's nice and clear like that. Okay, Mike, just lob him out a little way to allow for the swing back. Hang on, that's tangled this uh, superb lead I'm using. <laughs> Folks want to know, there it is a piece of scrap lead wire. The first goldfish of the station. Hey! How far out was that, Paul? That was, a, that was about sort of 60 yards out, which by the standards here is a long, long way. Uh, yeah. Certainly don't need to go long casts to find your fish. You can't see anything yet. I can see some sort of colouring down there. Yeah, I'm going to move over here from the. Oh, it's a little doggy. I said I'd be the first to nail a dogfish. <laughs> hey! Ah, now we've got the, the long, <laughs> the long journey. Give him some oxygen, Bob. There he is. Hey! <laughs> this is a dogfish with altitude. <laughs> <laughs> and what bait was that on? That was on Sunday. While you wait for a bite on the big rods, don't waste good fishing time. Try spinning for one of those big pollock. There's more than a good chance of a four pound plus fish. And it was shortly after that that I got a conga hooked up on the Integra rod. There was only one thing to do in this situation. Yes, send Mike down an unscalable ravine to rescue my fish. My landing net pole isn't 30 feet long. So Mike climbed down there don't ask me how he got down. Please don't tell his mum where I sent him. But he managed to rescue my catch. And just look at the height we were fishing from. I told you, this wasn't called serious rock fishing for nothing. It 
really is fishing on the ledge. <laughs> I wonder how long it'll be before someone else pinches that as a title for one of their articles. The Totally Awesome Fishing Show. You've seen the rest? Now, watch the best. There we go, people. A congreel off the snaggiest rough ground you could ever want. Out here, serious rock fishing. It's not a monster congreel, but I'll tell you what, a lot of guys like to catch fish like this. I guess he's about three and a bit feet long, maybe seven pounds, might go seven pounds. And that was on mackerel. And I'll tell you what, we've only just got here. We've lost another one in a snag, a bigger fish. I cast one rod further out. 40, 50 yards, nearly took the rod in. Never fished it before in our life. Paul's here with us. <laughs> Let's get him unhooked back and back out again. Watch a grab. <laughs> Animal crab. That is nearly down to, that's nearly down for Paul. That's almost down for tea size, that one. It's very nearly edible. You can see that one there. Well, we'll that was a big old crab, that one. Ah, uh, that's got to be a fish. Something's twanging there. That's a nice bend. Yeah, good fish there. Whatever it is. Still moving, is it more? Yeah, it's a hush, I think. Oh, oh wow. conga, nice conga. That's a nice one. Yes, please. That's a good conga. Yeah. That's the easy bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, Paul's 20 pound conga was unable to meet our photo shoot deadline. As Mike started the descent to the ravine to land it, the big eel dived down deep and cut Paul's line on some barnacles. The bigger the fish, the luckier you need to get. Yes, I've already earmarked that rocky outcrop in the distance lying right across any tide flow. Could be giant taupe or even a poor eagle shark. And no, I'm not joking, Ireland is the place for a shark from the shore. Pardon? Not near the edge. Okay, just keep the line tight so he washes around. Don't pull on the barnacles, go back the other way. That's a nice hus. That's not TV sure hus. Turn around, give a big toy hose to Mike. There's a pull up here. Zoom in on it's holding nicely. Can you zoom in, Paul, the little finger things yeah, on the way this way. That's a good hus. Fucking cracking chop the steel. Mike was filmed with his PB Shore Hus and is now well into SRF. Just two ounces under double figures and a fish to be proud of. Pull that Keep holding, keep holding, keep holding. Could be a load of starfish. Got a real small strap conger on here. Just about on packing up time. One in the baits in. And he's just at the end down there. Tide's, I think, flooding now. I'd try and haul him up if you can, Mike. He's just yeah. about that size. He's 150 feet down there somewhere. 
There he comes. He coming? Yeah. Oh, yay! There we go. We're still on the bike. That's a Roger tip, yeah. There he is, in amongst the pretty flowers. There we go. It's a long way up for him. Almost like a freshwater eel, isn't it? Yeah, it's a big freshwater eel yeah. if it was, yeah. No, it is. And you can see there the size of his jaws there. Just put him down, we'll have a look there. If he'll lay still. A predator's head. That's the last point that a lot of the fish see going through there and those jaws and this one is not a big one but acceptable nevertheless I think we pack up we've done very well conger bullhus dogfish well guys that's giving you some sort of idea on SRF serious rock fishing we haven't had the greatest weather we've done the best we can we caught some good fish to show you and I'll tell you what does it work or not so on SRF Big fish, big baits, big tackle. And look at that rainbow. It's not fake, it's real. I'm in the car, on the ferry home. I'll tell you what, it won't be long before I'm back. Oh, what a setting. <laughs>